Hello fellow nerds and welcome to Nerd Doom, where the table explodes with conversation about anime games and geek culture. My name is Mike. I'm Addie. <laughs> Let's get things started. So, hello world. It's been a while. We're back! Yeah, and hopefully we'll be, we'll actually be for real. L- a little bit more frequent on releases and everything. Yeah, especially now. We've, we've been pretty busy in the past, when this first started the summer at the time. Well, the first part of the year in general, we haven't released anything since December. Right. I mean, what, what was it? We went through in the equivalence of like three cons? Four cons. Four cons. <laughs> no, three cons. Yeah, three cons. Separate. Well, I mean, three cons. Two of them were separate from each other. Right. For us. Yeah. Because you got to go to Guardian Con. Well, we started off with MomoCon. Uh, no, no free, does FreeCon count? Ten, well, no, did we go to FreeCon? No. We didn't go no, to we did. No, we did. Oh, we did. I did. Briefly. Yeah, I, we, went, we went for one day, and uh, we went with my sister. That's what it was. That's what it was. Okay, so we went to FreeCon here in our town. Um, it, it's a very small, small convention, hence FreeCon. Yeah, it's in our hometown in Tallahassee. 850. <laughs> and then um then we went to momo in atlanta which that was an experience that um so so this is the first time we went to a con that was outside of the state in a I think, long while yeah in a long time i've been to awa a few years back and soccer con in seattle was my first one and first time together so, yeah and so like going to atlanta and we stayed at a, a friend of uh, a close friend of ours uh your cousin yeah um, his friend my family what what yeah and so like it it was interesting. Um, I, it was the biggest con I've ever been to. Like, it definitely was bigger than Metro, which is our hometown. Our home, like... Our home con, if you our will. Our home con. So, like, it was really interesting to go there, and there was so much. Plus, it was really nice to attend a con rather than work it. Yeah. Also, shout out to uh, Giga and Snitsnap for uh, taking a few moments to talk with us and uh, uh, take a picture with us. Uh, love you guys. And uh, yep, Thanks for coming out to the con that this year. That was fun. Yeah, that was really cool. Oh, and Pro ZD, it was awesome to meet him. Yeah, that was really cool. That's the chillest dude I've ever seen. Like, you could say something and he'd be like, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> he has all the personality of Saitama. Oh like, my god, I loved him. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we went, and then you went to MegaCon Orlando. I went to MegaCon Orlando for one day because I had a friend who was flying out of Tampa. And I was like, hey, so, yeah, we're going to Tampa. Do you want to go to a con with me on this one day? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, great, because I really want to meet David Tennant. <laughs> so I, I, my only purpose for this convention, other than to go with my friend, was David Tennant. Well, originally, you weren't even planning to go. You no, because it was You were to send a... your friend to go get the, get the thing for you. I had to basically force you to be like, no, you just did. go. And I was like, well, I don't think it's a good... No, just go. Look, it's Mega, not, it's anyone not who goes to MegaCon or any Comic-Con type uh, convention can tell you that is expensive. Well, I mean, it's not even about expensive. It's just a lot because it's... That too. It's a giant, like, Hall of Fame Hall of Fame fest. It really is. It's a giant, in the side of a giant dealer's hall kind of situation. And it's just kind of funny. Artist Alley was really dope, though. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We went and trolled that for a while. She, she was trying to find something to take home with her because she had to fly all the way back to washington so she had to find something that was small enough to put in her suitcase and wouldn't get destroyed on the way there she ended up getting a map of middle earth if i remember correctly i could be very wrong on that but she got a really cool map that would be interesting and then uh two weeks ago i went to uh guardian con which is no longer guardian con anymore it's now called uh gaming community expo which is really awesome guardian con is made of these people that's been doing it for about five years now Originally it was uh, Destiny Con, and then it was Bungie Con, and then it became Guardian Con, and now it is it is what it is because it's become way more than that. The biggest cool thing about it is that um, they do this mostly for charity. Mm-hmm. A lot of the proceeds that go, go to it goes to uh, St. Jude Hospital, um, which they raised. Oof. How much did they raise so this year? So on ticket sales alone, it was over $3 million. Close to $4 million. In all, they made about close to $8 million. They they got uh, eight million dollars donated, um, and that's all to Saint Jude. Yeah, it's all to Saint Jude. Whoa! And so it was huge, and it's one of it's one of our funnest because I got to meet uh, a lot of the people in my raid team in Destiny that we and some of them you've never met before. Yeah. Um. So one of my one of my good one one of them that we I would like to say it's a good friend now is uh Jada, um or Jonathan, uh he uh <laughs> who 
he's one of the few people that I know that re- that mess that uh, annoys us about when the next episode's gonna come out. <laughs> Um, guess what <laughs> yeah he's from uh north north dakota uh you were yeah. gonna say north carolina weren't you no 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 <laughs> i just for some reason dakota sounded so weird because it's like north dakota and like he lives in like the mountains and like is barely ever <laughs> with like the worst internet and all that stuff uh so it was really nice to meet him i like learned a lot about him and things of that nature so it was really cool and then we met two of our others that was in um uh, that live in orlando um uh, taking cold so it was really cool um, and then after that, we went to our home con. To Metro. Work at, we like to work there, um, is a MetroCon. Um, it's very, uh, you know, the experience is very different. It really is. Like, cause we work this one every year. Um, it's a lot of fun because we kind of get behind the scenes of what's going on. Um, and then we get to enjoy other people enjoying it in a way we live vicariously through them, but it's just, it's a, sorry. It, <laughs> kick the cat i kick the cat <laughs> <laughs> not very hard he's fine anyway well, we get to live vicariously through everybody and see their enjoyment because we had a lot of first year goers this year for this con in particular so it was, it was very weird how many like day passes we got so like we, oh. learned, we learned that every single like day pass uh was sold out if i remember correctly for every not, for every day yes to the point the that they had to passes. move into you know, the day passes which they are wristbands which had to move into the next day's wristbands for that particular day yeah they had to go to the reserves if I yeah remember. they went to the reserves which were basically the next days so that's huge and that's and that's really huge and then it was really interesting to have this many people come in and like the change of security and things of that nature of how things were well, going. Well, part, part of the security change was TCC because they're remodeling the area. So. Well, yeah. And, it, and, uh, and mind you, that's not just for Metro. It's for a lot of cons that they do. Yeah, like, they did that with it's the... It's the same with Tampa Bay uh, Comic Con as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we, we saw it there too. And the hotel that the convention center is connected to, sort of, there's a little walkway bridge. Uh, they were redoing the lobby last time we were there, and now we went back and saw it, and it looks amazing. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, and then that new restaurant, that's oh, taste. It's so Ooh, much better. That is amazing. I was like, I haven't had a good whiskey sour in a while since I've been And they made there. it the, tr- the traditional way, too. Yes. Ugh, it's the only way. Oh, and she hit me up with a really good white Russian, which I hadn't had in forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was super fun. Uh, so, more... So uh, anyone you... who's interested <laughs> in going next year to MegaCon, which is again in Tampa, Florida, um, every year that has a theme uh, next year's is man versus machine. And it'll be July 23rd to the 26th, 2020, which that will be during my birthday that Friday. I'm sorry. For next year. I don't know. I, I always have. I always either like super. Ex- it's I'm always excited and then immediately unexcited as soon as it happens. Cause I'm <laughs> well, like I'm so excited because I get to have my birthday at a. Well, con, it's on a Friday this I year, become, so or next then, year. But then I become super unexcited because like um, like the, because we become so busy that like a lot of times I just don't really. You, you know, don't get to do anything. You don't get to do what I usually like to do, which for me is really just have a couple of drinks and play games. But uh, well, it'll be on a Friday, so hopefully it won't be as busy. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so moving on, uh, we looked into some new uh, some news that came out in the past uh, week or couple couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, couple weeks. Um, this week, uh, San Diego Comic Con is happening. It started uh, Thursday mm-hmm. uh, and is going to end on Monday. On Monday, uh, some of the things that we pulled out of that was really interesting. Some of, some of which is like now, mind be- you, there's a lot coming out. Oh, that there's we a enjoy, lot. I mean, some of the things one. we're not going to mention, like like Tom Cruise's new tra- trailer for Top Gun and. Some other things that, that they cool, put though. in and dark material stuff of that nature. But yeah, um, if you ever want to look, just look up their their site. They've already got like half of the trailers that they put a out. Crap ton of stuff. Yeah, um, some of the ones we really were interested in: Batman Beyond getting a remastered. Oh, HD, thank God! HD remaster finally on Blu-ray. I um, feel like I never got to watch the entire series when it was on TV because of either multiple reruns or there were certain episodes that they were just like, "Ooh, we can't put that on here." No, they put all of it. Did they? Yeah, Did they I just finished the them? entire thing um it's just that yeah there was a lot of reruns that that was a thing but like Mm. yeah they definitely they definitely played the whole thing um i haven't watched in years i have not either um so it'd be nice to have it on blu-ray because i is that going to end up in our collection oh yeah (laughs) i i am i'm all down for some wolf idol all day every day all right we'll have to keep an eye out for that one as uh, should you uh see other thing we just recently watched the star trek Picard, Picard, trailer. Picard trailer that just came out today. Oh, I'm uh, so excited to see how this turns out because I like. I mean, this recording. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like how they're from what the trailer is going, where it's going, where he looks like he's been retired, so he's running the wine farm or the um yeah the winery, 
and you can tell he's not too happy with being retired necessarily. Yeah. Well, it seems like or it's either that or it's I I think he's per- it seems like he's perfectly fine with being retired. I think it's just that he's forced into a situation he cannot re- he has to come out of retirement. True. Sort of. We don't fully know the whole plot. But then again, based on yeah, the trailer, so. it didn't seem like he he's involved, but he it, I didn't expect him to be as involved as he was because the way they said it was originally like oh, well, he's no longer part of the Starfleet and he's not really going to be the way he was before. But I was like, oh, so, but he basically still, like, makes a crew, like, throughout this, throughout the trailer. Like, what it seemed like in the trailer, he still is at half to pick up a crew. Well, that's because of whatever, whatever this random chick that all, shows up. All we got out of it is that there's the Borg, there's, what's her face? Seven of nine. Seven of nine, which is really cool. I love that she's back in this. And so that was really interesting. I don't know. I it's one of those things where it comes out next year, so we'll see when things come. We're up gonna have it, it'll be only I believe on CBS, CBS Access. Ac- all Access. Yeah. All Access. So We're gonna CBS have to get All that. Access. So like it'll be another one of those things where I'm just waiting another season of like Discovery before I can just binge watch all of it. <laughs> 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 I've um, been told that after season one, it gets really good. Yeah. Um. That's what um. That's what a couple of my uncles tell me. They they liked it a lot better after season. Especially season three, actually. Apparently. Yeah, my coker told me all about it. Like, he, well, he didn't tell me all about it. He was like, "Oh, you need to watch it. It's really, really good." I'm like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> yeah. After uh, that, uh, if you want to know right now, uh, all 255 Robotech ep- episodes uh, are out for streaming for free on what platform? Oh God, it's through uh, this. This uh, it's like Filmster or something of that nature. It's some particular streaming platform that um, another company opened up. That they're just, it's just a bunch of free movies and, and other things. So ro- all of Robotech is going to be on that. And you can pretty much find that any, anywhere. Um, and so that's really exciting because I love Robotech. Robotech is one of my favorites. And it would be nice to rewatch all of that. And I think we, and mind you, for all you people that's going to be like, I mean, actually, yes, it's the technically the, re- the second version of Robotech, not the first version, which was just about like 20 some odd episodes. Uh, this is the Robotech that lasted years. Uh, <laughs> the one that everyone's more likely familiar with, due yeah. to how long it was. The, that's the one that that has like the iconic U.S. like um, U.S. version of the opening. Okay. Um, like just opening up, like a like opening up and seeing the main character and fly off, very Top Gunish like kind of <laughs> Robotech series. And next we have the English dub trailer for My Hero Season, My Hero Academia Season Four. Yeah. Um, we've already seen the Japanese version. Now Funimation has released the English dub version, and I'm hyped for it because this arc in the series is really interesting for character development. But also, you kind of get introduced to some no- new villains that you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So. I, I the thing uh, one one of the thing is the trailer is exactly the same as the the Japanese the Japanese sub so if you haven't so if you haven't already watched it it's nice nice to see um, I'm pretty excited for it especially since we just came out of Metricon which we got to see a lot of the yeah lot we of got the cast it. from My Hero be be there they were super so, nice so um, it was really nice to get that in English like right then and we got to meet someone has she been announced because they show her in the trailer. I'm gonna say we got to her meet. credits is her credits is on behind the scenes. Are you talking about Emily's character? Or yeah, about, yeah, she's technically in it right now. We're not gonna say who just in case, but uh, we got to meet um, someone who she wasn't an official guest, but she was there with her uh, significant other, and we got to meet her too. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um. So there was that. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what happens. Uh, that comes out in fall of of uh this year which i believe is in it's gonna be october specifically possibly we have to double check that but don't quote us on the release of that just yet probably september but like uh i know it's in the fall so there's that uh another thing we're pretty excited about i'm super excited about this i mean okay you don't have it's not a it's not a competition okay (laughs) i don't know but like the history like documentary watching part of me is just like oh yeah yeah, i know you love documentaries moving on (laughs) So the um, Netflix is coming out with a new documentary called Into the Anime, which Enter is, the Anime. Enter, uh, what did I say? Enter. You said Into the Anime. Into I mean, the Anime. Into uh, either way, it's really uh, cool. But so it's, it's Into the Anime. Mm-hmm. So like, it kind of follows this person that's going to be the host of it that is supposed to know nothing about anime and kind of just goes around and talks to like big names, big names in anime. A lot of focus. On, there's obviously going to be a lot of focus on the Netflix original anime that came out, like like Castlevania, Gretzko, and uh, the. Anime that just came out Friday, no, next Friday, 
He's either this Friday or, or next Friday, which is Ken, King and Ashura, which is like a fighting anime. Basically, think think of a, like a side story of Baki. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> truly. Um, and they're going to have interviews with um, people from Saint Seiya. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna butcher the Japanese names. I don't yeah, want to be Takahashi, disrespectful. Who, were, who helmed the uh, Evangelion series? Oh goodness. Uh, C- Shinji Aramaki, uh, who, who's done things like Apple yes, Seed, and Full Moon Office. That um, one I'm looking forward to. Um, he's going to. He's going to be directing directing on the Netflix on the new Netflix Ghost in the Shell with Kenji with uh, with Kenji, uh, which is super exciting. So yeah, a lot of a lot of things are gonna be exciting about that. We don't know too much about the actual how it's gonna be. All we know it's gonna be a lot of interviews, a lot of different things. We'll see how it goes. It comes out August fifth. August fifth. So I'm pretty excited about that. Next month. I'm um, really excited. I can't wait to watch that one. Yeah, other than that, I didn't really see anything else like I was really super inter- interested in. Um that isn't like part of part of our next part part. But to know about this, since we're super excited, it's time for a minute in hype. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, hey so, Mike, do you want to be the very best there ever was? Oh God! <laughs> You're gonna catch them. Uh, so yeah, so uh, if you if you don't already know, a new Pokemon is coming out. Um, Pokemon game to be specific. There are new Pokemon. You're not wrong. New Pokemon game, fine. New iteration of the Pokemon video game series. Yes. Um, called Sword and Shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is gonna be very different um, than the others. This is gonna be if new you ever played- region. Huh? So, so sorry. There's a Galar region. Yep. And um, like unlike unlike before, if you ever played Pokemon Let's Go, um, the look is gonna be very similar to that. I think Let's Go was like kind of a test run for that type oh, of yeah. system. If anyone if anyone has played that game, it's it's, it's everything about it is a test run. Now, yeah, there's a lot more things that are gonna come out come out about it. They released uh they released at least the three new starters. It's gonna be it. They released a couple. Of Pokemon is going to be about it. They release a lot of core mechanics, including the Dino Dynamax, which I'm kind of not super into. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. I have to see how it plays play out um, throughout the entire game. Yeah. I'm curious to see what other new Pokemon there it's, might be. Personally, I'd, it's it's all about the new Pokemon and the feel of the more world world like ex- exploration parts of it because. Yeah. Man, is this thing huge? Like, is this gonna be more free? Do you think it's gonna be more free roaming, or do you think you have to follow a direct path? Or I, I really hope so. I think it. I think it would probably be much like how X and Y was, where um, it feels like it's free roam, and you can walk to wherever you want to walk to because you have more directional, more directions to go go certain places. But I still feel like it will be. I still feel like it will have like a. I wouldn't say a a, a linear feel to it, but probably a a natural natural way of coordinating you uh, uh like taking you to the right path right kind of situation but mind you i mean every one of the pokemon are technically like free roam kind of situation like True. how do you finish them in the story i guess the you better question is it more open world read and things. yeah it's a little bit more open world than it is before like dude the trainers yeah um so the gym leaders gym leaders at, the gym leaders is probably the most exciting part to me. I'm a little upset about one of the things about the gym leaders, though. Is the fact that... it Like, depending on which version you get, Sword or Shield, you're either going to get the fighting gym leader or you're going to get the ghost gym leader. That's not the only one that's going to be the case. Really? I, really I think there's a couple that's going to be like that. Maybe. I think... But they, they, there was emphasis that there's there's different... They're, they're going to course and, and much like how certain Pokemon that you get... Um, it, it's gonna be oh well you don't get to do this here versus you here. I bet you it's the same way as the Dynamax uh, raids as well. You think? I think so. Like hmm. I, I I have a firm, firm belief that's gonna be because there's only certain Pokemon you can get through the Dynamax Dynamax raids. You can't get that might be an online thing rather than a uh, in game. No, but you can do you can do Dynamax like in game. You don't have to be online. No, I meant the raids. No, no, the ra- no. The raids are a part of the game. Oh, okay. That's not an only online thing. It it coerces you to want to <laughs> have other have others with you because it's probably harder. Yeah. But you can do it on your own if you want. Let's see how that turns out. Like, there's a lot of new mechanics going into this uh new game, so it'll be interesting to see how it is. Um, this particular one will be released on the Switch series. Um, has there been any news of it being released? Uh, re- released, <laughs> released on uh, the DS systems? No. Okay, so only, only be Switch? On the Switch. Ooh. Yeah. No. Just assume DS is dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
it is it is over for the ds there is no reason for them to ever like you know try to like i mean there's still games that comes out on it but i especially with the the switch light coming out i i just believe that there's gonna be barely a, a reason to uh uh uh, put more emphasis on the 3ds at this point yeah now for pokemon sword and shield um the release date has come out for november 15th yes. of this year which i'm very happy about so you know we're gonna have a pokemon night right yeah uh, which means i also need which to mean, finish let's which, go which is which is basically like oh cool i get to buy a buy a switch and also the games yep. just so i get the chance see to the problem play. is once i get a pokemon game i play it and i don't let go of it so if it's on a certain console and we only have one console he's not getting the console yeah uh it is very true and then we have never i was like we've been buying them together each version since x and y yep and so like that was my first one for yeah. my yeah, and so like the best best one to start on, honestly, yeah. truly, personally, um, unless you go original, and then that's pretty good. Which you got, you got a chance, you got kind of a chance to feel how the original feels like on Let's Go. Yeah, which I enjoy. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, we've been doing that for a while, and so like we only have one Switch right now, and so it it is not even remotely a, a thing to not have it. More than likely, I'm probably gonna get the Switch Lite, honestly and truly. I feel like. Uh, I, the only reason you would buy it because and, and there's kind of a segue to the new stuff is the new the new the switches new switch. um so they're releasing a switch light and a and an upgraded version an of the switch. upgraded switch which uh, the upgraded switch is really just a an upgraded battery um that's all it is and so the new battery life on the upgraded switch is going to go what to nine hours yeah at the, and that's at off the dock. Maximum, but between four and nine hours uh, where right now it's about it's up it's like three point five to like six, which um, isn't horrible. Majority of time is about three hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, on it without the dock, and then like uh, the only thing I was scared about is if they were gonna change the resolution on like the light, which they didn't. Um, if anything, I feel like the light is actually a lot more interesting because like without the without the uh, the separate Joy Cons, without the HD Rumble, um changing up a d-pad to something that's a little bit more you know nice to feel on did a... they take off the motion sensing on the light yeah because you wouldn't need to... oh, what? like if you move the console in your hand is that going to cause stuff on this you know that's a good question i want to say yeah because i i don't know if it's in, if it's not in there or not i want to say did i hear they took that off of the new switch as well no no oh, okay it, it's literally just the same as the other switch but just with a new battery oh, okay um, a different, a better battery. That's all it is. Um, which is, in line sight, it's kind of disappointing because you kind of, a lot of people were hoping that they were announced like the Switch 2 kind of thing. Like, it is a little soon for that. Or like, or like the Switch Pro, you know? Like a, a very high uh, updated Switch that had better uh, things, had Bluetooth connectivity, had like a better, better screen, possibly a bigger screen. And for all we know, Nintendo is making their way towards that yeah, threat right now. Maybe. But I don't know if they even need to, honestly and truly. Like I I I don't feel like that. But then yeah. again, I'm not a I'm not a person that plays my Switch on like a plane for like six hours, six to eight hours. So I'm I'm not that person. No, which is fine. So <laughs> the Switch Lite uh, retail value looking like it's going to go roughly about two hundred dollars, and then the upgraded Switch about three hundred, give mm -hmm. or take. It's the same. The new Switch will be the same as the current Switch right now, which is at three hundred, and then the Switch Lite will be at two hundred, which is a steal. Yeah, uh, it is. I I mean like. It's it's a great it's a great price for something of that nature. It's very much going to be like the two D two DS where people are just going to eat that up because it's and what's really cool is it comes in multiple colors. Yeah, it's like the iPhone of Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of Nintendo, is yeah, it Fire Emblem. So there's a couple of games that I'm super super excited about that came out recently. Um, Fire Emblem Three Heroes just came out today yesterday oh. <laughs> um it's another it's the new new iteration of the ser series very much i wouldn't say very different but it has a very updated version of the like tile tile based st strategic game that we all know if you, i mean have you played fire emblem heroes i've never played any fire emblem games. so you never played not. the mobile game i've never played any of them okay it's a great game and it has an amazing storyline in most of the most of the games in this one it's a very different where um 
you play as a character that is kind of a teacher that um i i saw the synopsis in the trailer for it and it looked really good yeah it's a really cool story it has like three it has a thing about three factions it teaches about all the other things it doesn't just focus on like the individual things it's like cool like so fire emblem of- harry potter Sort of. Not. I mean, in the in the military standpoint, yes, but not like <laughs> a sorting hat and magic stuff. I mean, there's magic, but it's just, <laughs> but it's not that extensive. I okay. Mean, I mean, it's very good. I I love the series for a while. I've never been one to finish it because I'm horrible at strategic games. Uh, but I love the games in general. So I would I play Fire Emblem Heroes all the time, and so uh, it'd be nice to see all that. And they already announced that they're gonna put the new characters from three heroes in the fire emblem heroes right and like the next week nice um, there's that um uh marvel ultimate alliance 3 black order uh finally co- finally came out last week on friday um it's uh the next iteration of the ultimate alliance series um i don't think you ever played it i've seen people play but i personally have not played it. the only the only thing i've ever gone towards in terms of marvel uh is going to be the marvel versus capcom series yeah true um, I was Capcom three more so. My at, favorite, at but like uh, <laughs> a lot of favorite fighting games are like <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, only two. Uh, um, so yeah, this one's just the next iteration. It's a top down um, uh, action RPG uh, game. It's very focused on the co op feel feel into it. it. Has a lovely. Usually they have a really nice story and really the graphics look really good on it. Yeah, yeah, it has really interesting point point factors into lore of the comics and things of that nature so it's a really nice game to, to play i'm pretty excited to play it it's one of those ones i plan to pick up pretty soon and be like hey who wants to come up with me let's all go do things and then find out who gets to be captain america <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh so uh there's that that's what that's all the games i can think of that came, came out uh but shout out to dragalia lost, dragalia lost is another who, nintendo uh, game yeah depending uh mentioning uh mobile games uh, dragalia lost is a nintendo game that came out that's been a year yeah give or take say. Uh, it's been a year since, like, actually recently. Um, it was because they came out with, like, a year, like, thing. Oh, that's what it. that was for. Yeah, it was it was a celebrated year of Dragalia Lost. It's a very, good, very fun game. It's, like, another action RPG style uh, style style game. Uh, the, they're, they're up to, it's the, let's see here. The story-based version of the game is up to nine chapters right now. And, uh, and the tenth chapter will come out in the next update. Yes. So in between, while you're waiting for that to come out, they have events, special events that go on. <laughs> this current event we're playing is not our favorite, and it's fairly rough. It's just so, it's so hard. It's like, once you get past, like, trying to get a certain level, it gets harder than it needs to be or should be, I think. But Well, I think it's also the fact that we're getting, we're, we're finally getting to the point where the grind is the most, like, extensive. The grind is real Because in now game. we're getting to the point where we just constantly have to, like, play just to get the materials we need to upgrade our stuff. And so that's like, and then you try and own. summon stuff and hope to God you get what you want. Oh God, please don't make me do more water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying I, so a, hard to get another wind dragon. There are dragons in this. If you haven't been able to tell from the title. Yeah. I mean, Oh no. Uh, yeah. It's essentially like an RPG about like being like turning into dragons. Uh, basically you're a prince of a country that's getting taken over by a dark entity that's possessing your dad and then it possesses your sister and she kicks you out and turns you into a traitorous prince quote unquote and then you create your own kingdom and then you're trying to fight back against her bad kingdom and then you ally yourself with various different dragons right <laughs> but you can also turn into that dragon it's really that's the weird part but it's really fun yeah i I really do like the game, and uh, it was nice to find more people that like the game. Yeah, we the MetroCon that we were at, we found a lovely artist in artist Alley Will uh, Willowisp, I believe is the artist's name, and she had um, oh, I forgot the character's name all of a sudden. It's a fire. It's the fire worm. Was it? No, it's not. Br- Br- yeah, it's Brunhilda. That's what I like. Brunhilda. She had some artwork for Brunhilde, which is beautiful artwork, and then she had like a really dope like two sided keychain that I got because mm-hmm. you don't find that stuff very often. So yeah, 
So that was nice to see. And then we friended her on the game. So yeah, if you're bored and you want a game that's not going to kill your phone in five seconds and just casual play, Dragalia Lost. We're not sponsored by them or anything. We just think it's a really cool game. <laughs> yeah, that's all the things that came out. Uh, get interested. They're all good. It's all real good. And Cuphead recently came out on oh, Switch. Yeah. So, so if you like that stuff, please play it. And there's, yeah, a, couple, there's a couple of others that's really exciting to play, but uh, all those are uh on the switch and pr- currently loving it so awesome uh no. so to take things a little bit more seriously uh we heard some bad news this past uh thursday i believe um i don't know if you've, anyone's been keeping up with it but some sad news out of japan uh kyoto animation was target of an arson attack um the studio one in kyoto japan went up in flames and heavy casualties they haven't had something like this in quite some time um if anyone is not familiar with kyoto animation themselves you may be more familiar with some of their works um they have uh, movies like a silent voice um series like kaon uh violet evergarden free uh what are the other ones clonade um uh uh haruhi suzumiya uh nichijo Lucky Star, Air, Air, Conan, uh, Conan um, um, a Full Metal Panic for Mofu and Second Raid, um, uh, a lot of very good Angel Beats, uh, a lot of very good um, series that all were uh, very known for their atmospheric uh, nature, uh, atmospheric uh, nature and background, very wonderful soundtracks. Uh, w- uh, very Kyoto Animation was also very known for their practices and with their employees and the way they treat their employees, especially since most of the employees they they hire are women. Women, so it was it was very a big big deal. Yeah, and they were an amazing studio from what we can hear. Like even the employees and like the neighbors that were around the studios had nothing but good things to say about them. Yeah, um, it's, um, it's a little crazy like how something like this could even happen to something like that. Now and, the yeah, it's it's. It's almost unthinkable. Like, why would you go after an animation company? Like, I in still, that way. I still wouldn't even really know. Like, um, it's not like it's not like it's even still known of like his reason. No, like the the cause of they do know these are things that the Japanese police have released, and that this is what we know. It's on multiple news networks. Um, the cause of the fire was flammable liquid. We don't know what kind that the person brought to the site, spread it around, and then lit it on fire. Um. They were, the, if I remember correctly, in some of the reports, in some cases, they were poured onto. Yeah, it was even per, per, persons, employees, and yeah, other, and some staff within the building as well. And even the suspect himself was, he may have just inadvertently got himself because he was also injured in the fire. Um, we're not going to name this person. The Japanese police have released who this person is. We are not going to mention him. We're not going to even give him that dignity because he doesn't deserve that. Yeah, we're not going to give him the. The airtime. Yeah, he doesn't deserve it. Um, it, it. Instead, we're going to just focus on what we, in remembrance and memories and um, honoring the victim, victims of the uh, mm-hmm. of the arson, unfortunately. And the if you're looking for a reason why, supposedly, this is very unclear. It was supposedly that he, may, he was supposedly yelling or shouting about how like they stole some work from him. That is not confirmed. Um, so that is, again, police are still investigating the reasoning behind this, um, of the 68 employees that were there that day, I think 34, 33 died on scene and another person has passed in hospital. So that's 34 victims total. Um, one of the victims possibly might be director, uh, Yasuhiro, Takamoto, I'm saying it slowly so I don't mess it up. Um, as of right now, he is missing. And uh, to to let you guys know, he's the director of Kyoto Animation. He's uh, one of yeah. I mean, and he's one of, he's one of the big ones. He's been doing it. He's been there since '94, and um, he he is known known for being being directing a lot of some really of our good favorite stuff. works. Um, so some, some of the favorite works. So, um. um Sentai Filmworks, who is the Texas-based partner f- with uh, Kyoto Animations, uh, started a GoFundMe. Um, right now, it has reached 1.7 million as of July 20th. Um, its original goal was uh, 750,000. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so they've blown past that. Um, as of right now, the plans for the funds are to go to the victims' families and to help the studio. Um, <clears throat> um, obviously, other than what GoFundMe takes in part for their fees, all that fund is planned to go towards the Kyoto animation people. Right. So, um, so yeah, if you guys um, would please um, take the time to no- donate uh, for the GoFundMe club. Um, if, if you ever want to help out the, the studio in any way, um, um, donate to the GoFundMe club. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't, which we will leave a description of the link, in the link in, in the link in the description, and then we'll also, um, well, um, if you could also, uh, if you if you don't want to put in the GoFundMe club, uh, donate to Animate, who are big about um, putting in retail retailing for things including including um, KyoAni and things of that nature, and also buy from buy directly from their site um, if you could just. Um, by their works and things of that nature that would mm-hmm. be really big and, and that's uh, going to help them recover too um what's the so i see here that the president of kyoto animation is considering demolishing the building after everything yeah so there's um so recent recent new twist um anime's new news network um uh, interview they were talking about how the president was considering demolishing the first studio building um and erecting a public park and with a monument that would be that would be in honor of the victim victims there and uh, possibly holding a memorial ceremony. That's all we got out of it so far. Um, he just put out a state. He just recently put out a statement talking about how um, this is a huge blow and can't believe something like this happened and um, it is obviously a, a a huge blow to their um, to everything they work for and things of that nature. And it's not just the company that's taken a blow. We as anime fans are taking a huge hit we've just lost 34 amazing artists amazing animators and people who put their heart and soul and love into these shows that we in turn love and enjoy watching and listening to so this is a huge tragedy and unfortunately some people online are saying some horrible things like they're not even considering like the loss of life they're all like oh what happened to the anime what's going to happen to this like don't consider what's going to happen with the anime i mean yeah it's a bummer but people lost their lives i was like and again we're not going to focus on anything like that because we don't want to again Mm -hmm. we much rather just focus on uh, remembering all the all the good things about it um, yeah and things like for me i've been a huge fan of kyoto animation for a very long time like I I know in young age I was I was watching the movies for uh, for Nod and things of that nature and some of the earlier work earlier works than that. So like for me it's very it's it's a huge like heartbreak for me. It was a huge shock to something that happened, especially since we spent, especially since like one of the people I was working with in Metrocon happened to play the English uh English uh voice of Tomoyo from Clonod. So it was very weird for me to hear something like this as soon as I come home after that. And so, and some of my favorite, favorite works that they've ever made and probably, probably down, hands down one of my top 10 movies of all time was Silent Voice. Because it, that... showed, it, it put a lot about what redemption meant for some, for someone like me. And someone... and then also kind of going through and getting out of your head, if you will. Yeah. It's a great, if you haven't seen that movie or read the series, I highly suggest doing that. But one of my other favorite ones that I really enjoyed that they put out, and it came out on Netflix originally, um, Violet Evergarden. Right. The animation style and the artwork and the color of this particular show is beautiful beyond all belief. The storyline and plot is amazing. It's basically about this, basically she was a child soldier. And now that the war is over and she's lost this person that she really cared about, but she doesn't fully understand because emotionally she's stunted right. in a way. So she's having to rediscover herself, rediscover how to live without this person. And it's amazing. So it's these emotionally impactful and not just here. This anime to be funny and he he he. It's thought provoking. It's touching there's some really great stuff out there. So it's not just cartoons to be cartoons or anime to be anime. And I think that Kyoto animations was able to prove that. Yeah. And I think there, and, and there's other, and there's other things that's just as good in terms of comedy and things of that. Nature. Oh no. Well, yeah. They're like really Lucky, good. Lucky star and, Joe <laughs> and the Fumofu, Fumofu series was some of the funniest forms of like, and like comedy I've ever, I've ever watched. Like 
I thought that nothing could be as funny as as Nichi Joe for me. And then they and they come out with Kobayashi and I'm just like Jesus. Oh Christ. yeah, Kobayashi comes out with one of the most wholesome like comedies I've ever watched. It's so good. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 crazy. It's it's and for us, um, this is a lot of a start of our, our club back when we were in college too. Because oh, I remember <laughs> forcing forcing our our people to watch um, a bit of Klonad and a bit of Haruhi, a lot of Haruhi. Haruhi was hilarious. Yeah, and I remember, and I remember borrowing Lucky Star from you. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, Lucky Star was one of one of one of my sister's first anime, and so it's it's a big it's a big deal because she still has the, um, the she still has the whole, set? Se- whole series yeah at home, um, the singles that when I bought them as singles with the shirt and everything, uh, and so it's really weird to um, have to talk about this in in this way. It's such a travesty. So um, no. It is it is a travesty, and this isn't to say that Kyoto Animations is gone. They're gone forever. We'll never get anything back. No, they have lost some works. It's going to take them a while to rebound. They still have Studio Two in Tokyo, and I think one other other one other studio somewhere in Japan. I don't know exactly where, unfortunately. So yeah, there. It's not like it's going to be anything, but we're we're taking the time to just remember what happened and bring on and try to put some sort of um, um, condol- condolences. Um, so for the people, for all the victims and the families of those victims for Kiyoani, Ke- um, we humbly um, give our condolences and uh, hope um, a very um, prosper- prosperous and eased time time for all this and for all the victims themselves. I hope you all rest well um, where we, where we go, whether when you believe in re- reincarnation or heaven or anything of that nature. I hope think things go well with you on the other end um and yeah so we we stand with y'all and we appreciate you sharing your loved ones with us through their art and we hope to see something bright and wonderful come out of this horrible tragedy yeah um and on that note we're gonna go ahead and end it in there for the day day uh we were starting we're trying to do things a little bit new trying to be a little bit more organized uh it's, I think we might do a couple of random ones, yeah, just to be fun. Yeah, and we'll probably have some random times. We still plan to have uh, guests every once, every <laughs> once in a while to talk about random stuff that we don't really think about. Um, I just recently learned that our numbering system is way off, and I just decided to keep it. Uh, <laughs> so technically, this is supposed to be episode twelve, but it's technically the thirteenth episode. <laughs> Ooh, this better be a good one. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there, there's that. Um, so we want to give a shout out to um, our close friend Liz. Um, she made our new logo uh, recently, and we're I'm working right now to get the, the web, uh, website updated and things of that nature. But we have to give her a huge shout out for that. If you you can, could, yeah, if you could follow her on Instagram at uh, Eli Hamilton Art. Again, that's Eli Hamilton Art on Instagram. She's really good. She's awesome. I love her art style. Yeah, um, gotta gotta love her. Um, if any, and also, um, uh, please follow us on social media at um, Twitter, Facebook, um, eventually Instagram. We we don't know if we're gonna make that or not. I yet. don't know. Um, yeah, and you can always listen to us on Podbean, Spotify, Spotify, <laughs> Spotify, uh, uh, Spotify, iTunes, and Google. Um. Yeah, at the just look look for Nerd Doom uh, with a three instead of an E. And uh, until next time, see you nerds later. See ya.